and welcome. I'm Millicent Walker. Tonight, President Buhari and the All Progressives Congress APC asked the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal to dismiss the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party PDP and its presidential candidate Al Haji Atiku Abubakar. President of Senate Ahmed Lawan condemns physical assault on former Deputy President of Senate Ike Kwerimadu in Germany. Islamic movement in Nigeria, IMN, denies claims by the federal government that its leader, Sheikh Ibrahim al Zaki, planned to seek asylum in India during his medical trip. And thousands of protesters begin anti-government peaceful march in Hong Kong. President Mohamed Buhari and the All Progressives Congress APC are asking the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal to dismiss the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party PDP and its candidate Al Haji Atiku Bubakar challenging the February 23rd election on technicalities and evidential grounds. They allege that the PDP erroneously allowed a candidate who was not a Nigerian by birth to contest the highest position, adding that such was an adventure that violated the provisions of the Constitution. The president and his party therefore pray the tribunal to invoke section 131A of the constitution to dismiss the petition. Now that section strictly reads that a person must be a citizen of Nigeria by birth to qualify to contest the office of the president. They noted that Al Haji Atiku Abubakar was born on November 25, 1946, in Jada, a former Adamawa province of northern Cameroon, before a plebiscite was conducted in 1961 that now made the enclave part of Nigeria. The APC and its candidate therefore allege that Al Haji Abubakar was not qualified to enter the contest as the constitution forbade him from canvassing for votes to become a president. For Vice President Professor Yumiya Shibajo, the greatest attribute of any politician is the loyalty to his party. Professor Shibajo gave this position at the 80th birthday ceremony of the first chairman of his party, the All Progressives Congress APC Chief John Oyegun, at the nation's capital. He described Chief Oyegun as a faithful and loyal politician, which is not a popular opinion of some Nigerians about the political class. Our correspondent Gloria Umezuke reports. It's the 80th birthday celebration of former chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Chief John Oyegun in Abuja. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, and other top government functionaries, including the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, National Chairman of the Party, Comrade Adams Oshomale, and several state governors graced the occasion. The military. Various tributes went out on the remarkable life of the celebrant. We are very, very proud of your achievements. You have played a leading role in bringing the APC to government. The guest speaker, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, re-echoed the essence of empowering the nation. And it seems to me a bit is a symbol of not confidence but insecurity. If you don't want people to even argue with you, and every criticism is supposed to be an enemy of the country, no. If you are sure of your facts, if you are sure of your position, then it is not a sign of weakness to listen to constructive criticism, but actually a sign of strength. Professor John Yegun, who is the founding member of the Alliance for Democracy, and the first national chairman of the APC says he remains grateful for life at 80 as he gives advice to the government. We must stop being a nation of potential. We are potentially worthy. We are potentially great. We are potentially the leader of the black race. It is high time that these potentialities start being converted into reality. In a jovial tone, the vice president told the opposition party to join the APC train. But people like Chief Oyegun have shown that politicians can be loyal, faithful, distinguished men and women 
and it makes us all proud to belong in this company of incredible human beings. Let me end with a story of a politician and a story of a politician. This politician was a lifelong Republican in the US, in US politics. Before he died, he said, I want to change my party. I want to become a Democrat. Party members also were surprised. Why do you want to change your party at this, just a few moments before you die? Why would you change your party? Then he replied, it is better than what, that one of them dies than one of us. So tomorrow, when it is announced, they will say a Democrat died. I can only ask our friends in the PDP also to ensure that they cross over before they die. The highlight of the event was the cutting of the cake by friends. And in the great person of the Holy Spirit. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Still on politics, the Second Republic member of the House of Representatives, Dr. Junaid Mohammed, insists that zoning and rotation of power by all political parties is undemocratic. Dr. Mohammed told Channel Television's Ladia Kedulwale on our current affairs program, Newsnight, that any of the six geopolitical zones should be allowed to produce candidates that will be acceptable to all Nigerians. You now ask people to go and vote who they want to vote. But you say, okay, you can only vote so and so within a certain uh, premium, within a certain group. Now, you say there are six geopolitical groups, three in the north, three in the south. How many people from the north have tested power? And in whose name have they, are they testing power? In whose name is Buhari now uh, the president of the country? We have to be very careful in choosing our words and do so with maximum responsibility and care. Now, for example, if what any of the two parties, major parties, others are jokers, if any of the two parties decide to nominate somebody from the east, from the southeast, north, uh, say, and the people from the south will decide also to nominate somebody else, what is going to happen? Are you going to tell the man in the southwest that he, he has to withdraw? Or if a northerner decides to contest the election, right? Outside Buhari, are you going to tell, tell them that the, the votes are not going to count? You put together a contraption which doesn't make sense, it's you know, undemocratic, and you say it must work because you are Nigerian. Who are you? For the full interview with Dr. Junaid Mohammed, do watch Newsnight tomorrow, Monday, August the 19th, 2019, at 9 p.m., only on Channels Television. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has condemned the assault on former Deputy President of the Senate, E.K. Kremado, on Saturday in faraway Nuremberg, Germany, describing it as shameful. In a statement by his spokesman, Senator Lawan says it is absurd for anyone to blame Senator Kremado for the violent criminal activities in his home base, the purported reason cited by the mob for the attack. Senator Kremado was to give a keynote address at the second Igbo annual cultural festival and convention organized by Indigo Germany, when a mob which identified itself as members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, invaded the venue and attacked him. According to the President of Senate, Senator Kremadu, like all his colleagues in the Ninth Assembly of Senate, is concerned about the insecurity and other challenges in Nigeria and has also been at the forefront of patriotic efforts to finding lasting solutions to the challenges. He therefore called on the German authorities to identify those involved in the despicable act for the law to take its course. Parishioners of two slain Catholic priests in Enugu State are still mourning the death of the clergy who were murdered in separate attacks and are calling for justice to be served. When Channel's television visited St. James Catholic Church in Uguaka, in Kano East local government area, and St. Mark Catholic Church in Izag local government area of the state, parishes of the slain priests, the mood is still that of pain and sorrow. <laughs> If you are of the faith-based community or familiar with the Catholic faith proceedings, this service at St. James Catholic Church will pass for any other service. And so it really appears only this time 
it's more somber. And this is because the parish priest isn't celebrating this mass and will never do again as he was murdered a few weeks ago. The message by the visiting priest is a quick reminder of the need for a conscious and faithful living. In whatever you do, look unto Jesus. Let the hope of heaven rekindle the hope of God in our lives. It's one incident that has altered the order of service and have made them quite unhappy. Nobody lights a lamp and puts it under the table that must be put on where everybody will see. So he wanted last week as that anywhere you are in this area, all void and this way, you must be hearing it, morning prayers, every program we have is always on air. Father Paul, whose life was cut at the age of 49, would have been celebrating his 20th year in service of the Lord's Temple. A heartbreaking experience for his family members back home. My younger brother's death moved this nation. I mean Nigeria, Enugu State, and the entire world. My prayers, may it not happen again. In a similar development some 50 meters away from the city center in Ezagu local government area of Enugu State is yet another Catholic church, St. Mark, in Obnofia, whose priest was also murdered. Right at the entrance of the church is this poster of Reverend Father Rapoluchiku's obituary murdered in cold blood a few months back by gunmen. So Father Clement has been a good friend, at least a great assistant during the time I had a, a fatal accident. He's the one who sponsored my hospital bill and other things. As our crew visited another parishioner, Madam Virginia, she reached out to a small pamphlet bearing the picture of the late priest. Her grief can only be expressed through prayers. Father Clement, may your soul rest in peace. The palpable fear that may follow these incidences are quite understandable, but the Catholic Archdiocese of Inigu has some soothing words. The government has, um, of, of the state has decided to uh, employ some forest guards that will have to, you know, look around, come the areas and then be sure that we don't uh, have these bad elements that continue to bring people to harm. Already, some suspects have been arrested by the state police command and have confessed to the crime. Adequate prosecution should be done and seen to be done. Elsewhere, the Islamic movement of Nigeria has denied the allegation that its leader, Sheikh El Zaki, was repatriated for planning to seek asylum in India. The group describes the explanation by the federal government as a cover-up by government to hide its own misconduct in a foreign land. According to the group, the explanation is an afterthought with intent to cover up its role. Part of the statement by the spokesperson of the IMN, Ibrahim Musa, reads, quote, The facts are that the government mischievously went beyond its role of supervision to the level of maliciously interfering in the medical process, instructing on which doctors the sheikh and his wife must see, while refusing to allow them access to their own doctors. Apparently, the government had a hidden mission, end of quote. The group says it is contradictory that the same man accused of seeking asylum would still be unwilling to stay back irrespective of the circumstances, but preferring instead to return to his home country. And to security, five suspects are now in the custody of the police after a clash involving traders at the Lekpo Ukodo market in Abulegba, axis of Lagos State. The clash, which led to pandemonium, left four persons injured, while several others scampered for safety. Confirming the incident, the police public relations officer in Lagos, Bala Elkana, says the clash was triggered following an argument between a scavenger and one of the traders in the market. Normalcy has since returned to the market. In part two, after the break, residents of Abuja, federal capital territory, ask FCT management to create drainages and waterways to curb the flawed menace in the territory. Please join us again.